Again and again, something in one's own life or in the life around one will seem so important that one cannot bear to let it pass into oblivion. There must never come a time, the writer feels, when people do not know about this. This quote from Lady Murasaki's The Tale of the Genji helped us frame the beginning of this course. Today in world literature, we reach the end of our journey. We have read some of the best contemporary works by authors of North America, Latin America and the Caribbean, and Australia and Oceania. What have we gained? Our critics would make us out to be mere tourists. Surely, they would say, nothing can be gained through such a non-stop race around the globe. You have not even begun to address the complexities of the culture, much less the issues of translation. Why not, they would say, stick to something you know, something from an American background. You'll embarrass yourself if you go on this path to political correctness. Such arguments are badly flawed and are, in many ways, offered to keep us safely locked up quietly at home. Must we read each and every work by Patrick White in order to be able to say anything about his view of Australian exploration? Must we master Spanish to read Obsidian Butterfly by Octavio Paz? Will we be more at home with the anti-Semitism of Ernest Hemingway? As readers of literature, we must remember that we do not need a flock of graduate school professors to tell us what we may and may not read, and how we must and must not interpret. As we approach the year 2000, we should surely look around and find that ours is no longer a Western civilization. We are a global people in America, whether we live in Newark or Atlanta or Austin or Berkeley. We are daily impacted by people and events and ideas from other cultures. The power of literature, and we have perhaps in our technological world lost belief in this power, is that literature allows us to experience another world. Does a history text have any better way of representing the horrors of slavery than Toni Morrison's novel Beloved? Is the history of Latin America rendered any more meaningfully by a sociologist than by Garcia Marquez's 100 Years of Solitude? Is the idea of isolation defined more accurately by a geographer? or by reading Janet Frame's The Day of the Sheep. Here is what literature, and especially world literature, allows us to do. As we read literature, we become astonished. We find a commonality. We find contrast. We question and redefine our definitions of morality. We become imaginative. We become reflective. As we look deeply into a work of literature, we find significance in the themes represented there. In the following excerpt, from a student presentation, for instance, a young woman talks about the theme of displacement as depicted by the Mexican writer Rosario Castellanos in her short story, Death of the Tiger. Death of a Tiger. In this short story by Rosario Castellanos, we find that courage and bravery were not enough to withstand the power of the Caxlanes or white men as they invaded the Bolometic tribe's homeland of Chiapas, a state of southern Mexico where the Spaniards invaded in 1524. The Bolometic tribe was displaced, forced out of their land, and left to roam the mountains to find a new home. What they found could not compare with the Chiapas Plateau that was rich in pastures, woods, and water. Rather, they encountered a high terrace swept by hostile winds, poor, scorned by the vilest weeds and creepers. Not used to this kind of environment, the ch first the children, then the old people, and finally the women, began dying without understanding why. Finding it necessary to leave to find provisions for survival, the men traveled back down the mountain to what they used to call home, but what was now an unrecognizable town, Ciudad Real. In this city, the speaking paper of the law took away the rights of their land. Having no prosperity with crops and low chance of survival, the Indians eventually became enslaved by the Spaniards. Their protecting spirit, the tiger in the hills, was never heard of again. What had the student gained from her reading of the story? First, she has put together the techniques of legend and folklore to gain a narrative sense of the destruction of indigenous people of Mexico who were conquered and exploited by the Spanish conquistadors. Second, the student has gained a sense of the impact of that displacement on children, on families. Third, the student has gained insight into the oral culture of the Bolometic tribe who are victimized by the literacy of the white man's speaking paper in which all truths are set. Fourth, the student realizes that the spirit of people, the tiger of the hills, may be extinguished. In her treatment of death of the tiger, our student has demonstrated that she is 
been moved to think imaginatively. The power of literature has allowed her to experience another world. And so it is that we have become advocates for world literature. Two final points. In this course, we hope you have found that literature has helped you to articulate those emotions which are often only vaguely felt. Perhaps your feelings of tension in living between two worlds was articulated in Wingfoot Lake by Rita Dove or by the Maori writer Patricia Grace in And So I Go. Perhaps the complex and rich truth about relationships was made manifest for you in Garcia Marquez's Love in the Time of Cholera, or perhaps a feeling of being lost yet longing for redemption became real for you in reading Raymond Carver's Cathedral. Literature helps us find words for our feelings, helps us to place them, and hence live lives that are more meaningful because they are more understandable. We also hope that you have come to realize that there is such a thing as moral progress, and that the path to this progress is made possible through literature. As the philosopher Richard Reuty writes, human solidarity should be thought of as the ability to see more and more traditional differences of tribe, religion, race, custom, and the like, is unimportant when compared with the similarities with respect of pain and humiliation. The ability to think of people wildly different from ourselves is included in the range of us. Perhaps deep similarities were found between your world and the worlds created by Isabel Allende. Or perhaps you found that the fate of your grandparents in Warsaw in the 1930s is similar indeed to the treatment of indigenous Mexican cultures. Perhaps the worlds of Octavio Paz and Ali Wiesel are not so different after all. Or maybe the frenzied need for creativity is similar to all cultures as expressed in V.S. Nepal's The Pyrotechnicist. And so it is that in this course we wanted you to realize the power of literature to provide a touchstone, a master narrative to which you can return and again and again to help you clarify what is felt and feel what is common among us all. If we have succeeded in some small measure in allowing you to realize the power of world literature, then together we have achieved much.